Hello and welcome. My name is Mitch Sanders and I'm here with Jordan Yarn and we are very excited today to introduce another early career faculty award from WHS. Today we have Matush Bitesa. How did I do in your name? I, I apologize if I didn't do well. It's okay. You can call me Matt and my last name is Vieteja. Vieteja. That's yep. wonderful. Matt, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we usually start out these these sessions by talking about your how you got to a career path of wound care and how you came to uh, become a, um, an assistant professor at the College of Dentistry at University of Chicago. So if, if, if you could give us the lay of the land of your career path and, and um, how you got to where you are now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, it's a long path by now. So I started out as an undergrad at UIC, which is the University of Illinois at Chicago here. So, um, and I was part of this program called Guaranteed Professional Program Admissions for dentistry. So like I knew I wanted to be a dentist for a very long time, even before I applied for college. Like, so it's basically a program that gets you into dental school out of high school, but you go through the whole process. And what's nice about that program is that since the admission is guaranteed, it gives you a lot of flexibility to do a lot of other things during during your undergrad at that time. And so I tried out research. Um, so that was kind of like the thing that I wanted to do besides classes. And I was very lucky to be able to get into the lab of Dr. Luisa Di Pietro, um, who I think was a past WHS president. Um, right, and that's how I got into wound healing research. So it was basically from that point on, I was involved in wound healing research. Um, so I did uh, wound healing research as an undergrad, and then what happened was uh, she and others at the College of Dentistry started the dual degree program, which basically allows dental students to also get a PhD um, in seven years. Um, and I was kind of one of the first candidates to to try to do this program um, because I liked research so much. I like doing research so much. I love the community. I love going to the meetings. Um, and so, yeah, and so that's what I did. So it was a seven year program. Um, so while doing my dental degree, I, I it was four years of dental school and three years of the PhD. And I also did that in Dr. DPH's lab doing research, yeah. And what I focused on during my PhD was looking at regulators of angiogenesis during wound healing, um, specifically focusing on the last part of wound healing, the resolution phase, where blood vessels kind of regress naturally back to their normal states, uh, back to their normal levels. And I was really fascinated about that. And the fact that as I was writing my thesis, I realized that the same type of mechanism gets dysregulated in various um, diseases, um, specifically cancer, right? So when that that part of the process of blood vessel formation gets dysregulated, uh, that's part of the reasons why tumors are allowed to grow. And that link between wound healing and tumor genesis really stuck with me. And that's how I decided to, to do a, a postdoctoral fellowship um, after that. Um, and I did that at uh, the ETH in Zurich with Dr. Sabina Werner over there. Um, and she specifically looks at parallels between wound healing and cancer formation. So it was a natural fit for me to, to go there um, and do my postdoc there. Um, so yeah, so I did that for seven, eight years. Um, obviously during the pandemic that kind of extended the whole period of trying to find a position right as I was like publishing my work out of the postdoc. Uh, but it all worked out because then this this position opened up at UIC and I was able to apply and get it, which was really nice. <laughs> so it's great to be back, right? I, I got my bachelor's dental PhD here at this institution and now I'm back as, a, as an assistant professor. So it's kind of like a homecoming after seven, eight years of being in Europe. Um, and now what I do is I'm continuing kind of my work of comparing wound healing to other disease states, especially now focusing back to the oral cavity, like why do oral wounds heal better than skin wounds and how can we apply that to uh, chronic wounds um, to help them heal better, but also how does that process of, of wound healing become dysregulated in other diseases, such as oral cancer or periodontitis, which is kind of like a chronic wound of the mouth 
right? So I'm kind of going back to my dentist roots and trying to apply a lot of the uh, tools that I learned during my postdoc and a PhD in, in this field. So that's kind of a long answer, but that's how I am here now as an assistant professor. That's the kind of work that I'm doing. We, I, um, I actually worked on a, a diagnostic for uh, periodontal disease. We were looking at the red complex bacteria and we were working with Johnson Johnson on a project with them. It was really kind yeah. of cool. Yeah, fascinating, right? Yeah, it was it was it was really a fun project. Unfortunately, it was at a time when a lot of their funding kind of dried up because they had, you know, the market mm -hmm. dipped a lot. It's an issue with Tylenol at the time. And so uh, a lot yes. of projects <laughs> get didn't get uh didn't keep their funding and that was one of them but it was a it was a cool project it was a broad very similar to the diagnostic we have for chronic wound infection that we right. developed um it's a little peptide it's a broad spectrum it's um everything you know p gingivalis and all the other the red complex bacteria is a really fun fun project that we worked on the the one thing i hated about it was um p, ging p gingivalis is just it's the reason why people have bad breath. It, it smells just awful when you grow it in the <laughs> anaerobic chamber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like the opposite. Kind of like it's the opposite <laughs> of a yeast lab where you walk in and it smells like a bakery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is, you walk in and it smells like someone's terrible mouth. <laughs> so so, so um, how long have you been running your lab now? Uh, since September 2022. So I guess a year and a half. Been... Wonderful. And how, how many how many students are... What's, what's your team look like right now? Well, right now it's pretty, well, I say it's small, but it's really grown. I'm taking on a lot of undergrad students. Actually, a lot of these students that I used to be back when I was a student, these kind of pre-dental, pre-medicine uh, students who, and I'm trying to kind of give them a different perspective of being a professional, you know, that you could do research as well, or maybe try to get them to appreciate research a little bit more. Uh, kind of early on uh, before they get into medical or dental school. So I'm focusing on those types of students, and I'm also mentoring uh, three master students in the periodontics program here. So our, our perio um, residency program is a master's program, and so all residents have to do a research project, like a master's thesis. Um, and so I'm, I'm mentoring students in that program as well. And um, starting to look for now PhD students um, in the dual degree program as well. So we have a DMD PhD program, the one that I went through, but we also have a very robust MD PhD program here at UIC. Um, and so I'm kind of in the process of getting myself affiliated with that um, to really try to get more of these dual degree students. Yeah. Jordan, did you have a question? Yeah, um, actually I have a science question. Um, sure. So you're, you're uh work on the temporal relationship of healing and how cells of a healing wound can change over time is an active topic of discussion in our lab and, and in fact mm -hmm. we recently read um your matrix biology paper which i think is probably the main paper out of your postdoc based on on your little history you just gave us so for those who haven't read it uh, you have an outstanding matrix biology paper looking at the phase of healing and how fibroblasts change and how that can be used to understand cancer effectively and, and mm -hmm. fibrosis and cancer and things like that. It's just an outstanding paper. Um, we're kind of looking at a similar thing, but looking at uh, keratinocytes, which is of course yeah. very specific to skin stuff. Um, and so in the oral cavity, you don't quite have the same kind of epithelialization behavior. And it's like a very, uniting those two worlds is really important because obviously everyone knows the tongue heals very fast, the mouth heals mm -hmm. very fast, but exactly, you know, the, the relationship between them is, is something that I, as someone who's not a dentist, I've been playing with this idea for a long time and kind of trying to, to glean some of this. So I'll probably send you an email offline about what we can do together. Absolutely. But um, I'm curious um, how much of that work is continuing now in your lab and, and where's the next step going to be? Where are you taking it? Oh, it's very much continuing. Yeah. So my lab right now is almost like 95% bioinformatics, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I'm really taking the tools that I developed during my postdoc and, and taking them, them on and applying that more to, so <laughs> the matrix biology paper, and thank you for reading it. You saw the 
progression maybe, right? From microarray to RNA seq to yeah. single cell to spatial. As these technologies were releasing, we're like, oh my God, we have to do this now. Yeah, exactly. It was like a seven year journey of trying yeah. to adapt to these new technologies. And the costs just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the cool thing if, if for me as a CRO, when, when I buy primer sets in bulk, it can be reasonable. You know, when, yeah. when you start out and you're doing, you know, gene expression of 800 genes and you buy the minimum amount, it's very expensive. But yeah. once you buy, uh, you know, 10 times that, it, it the cost goes way down. <laughs> so I have my my a panel of like um, 282 genes that covers all aspects of wound healing. And I bought mm -hmm. it in bulk so I wouldn't have to pay the piper every single time I wanted to run a <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, that's the way to do it. But then you got to have that capital investment, right? You got to yeah. figure yeah. out how to get that initial had, bulk I'd, of money. I had, I had to spend 60 grand on just the code set. Oh my gosh, my heart just sunk. Um, so, so Matt, um, oh, what was I going to ask? I, I had a great question. Every question I have is great. So, um, I, do, do you do, uh, since you said 95% of your lab is bioinformatics, obviously a lot of this requires biological tissue to make the next, to ask the next question. Yeah. Right. So are you, are you building up an in vivo model system? Are you going to take this in vitro? Can you take this in vitro, considering how complex a wound environment yeah, is that's versus really good, really good questions. We're sticking to in vivo work. I mean, so right now what we're doing is doing a lot of actually data mining because again, there's been this explosion of single cell studies in the past few years that are, you know, they lead to great papers, individual papers, uh, but very few people are actually kind of comparing all of these data sets together. That's right. kind of what we're doing a lot of to try to figure out what the next step might be. One thing we're definitely doing, because there doesn't exist right now an oral healing data set uh, of the tongue um, for single cell at the single cell level. So we are actually developing that in the lab. We're That's trying great. to work with 10X to, because these are very small wounds to make sure we get enough cells, to get a good re representation of the whole healing process. Um, and from the point of view of these diseases, we are actively trying to collaborate with people here who um, work with, for example, oral cancer. So I'm working with oral pathologists uh, like Joel Schwartz, also an oncologist at um, uh, UIC College of Medicine here who's developing um, a controllable type of chemical carcinogenesis model in the oral mm -hmm. tongue in mice, right? And so the idea would be to compare the wound healing process in the tongue with the carcinogenesis process in the tongue as well, right? In the same mouse model. Right. That's kind of our goal. Um, but yeah, so so definitely we are we are trying to design these experiments from the ground up and in a way that to make the data analysis the most robust it can be, because as you just said, these are very expensive types of experiments. So yeah, um, and to the point you I, you know I gave a guest lecture yesterday and I made a point that I won effectively three years of funding on the heels of a Google search because it was yeah. data mining, right? Like there's uh -huh. so much data in these single cell data sets and these. There's no way for it to be encapsulated in one paper. And so often yeah. groups will just do the thing that they care about and then they'll put the rest of the data set mm -hmm. online. And so any you know students or postdocs that could be watching this video, go to the NCBI data sets, go actually yep. do these searches and see what gems are sitting there. Because I think that we're missing a lot of really important biology that, that we are um, you, know, you you and groups so, like you are, yeah. yeah. It's it's gonna be great. I'm 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 really excited about it. And especially if as you described, if you're connecting the dots between data sets, that's going to be hugely powerful. I'm, yeah, and from the point of view of like comparing wounds and tumors, right? From just at first glance, like why would you compare those two things, right? But it's actually the microenvironment, right? It's the fibroblasts, the endothelial cells, even the keratinocytes that are responding to a, the actual tumorigenic cells. Um, if you can separate those out, it's basically a host response, right? Um, right. And when you, and as we've shown in the matrix biology paper, the, the gene expression profiles are so similar between wounds and tumors from the point of view of the microenvironment that it's really remarkable. Um, and I feel like one field can learn a lot from the other. Um, and what we're trying to do is to try to understand the whole process of wound healing from a systematic perspective and try to pinpoint where in that process are things going wrong in different diseases, mm -hmm. right? So, 
in the matrix biology fair, it was all like matrix and fibroblasts, right? But there's all these other cell types there that you could right. base a whole project off of the endothelial cells, macrophages, whatever. Um, right. So it's really an endless type of investigation that we like doing, and hopefully other people will do too, because wound healing encapsulates everything. You know, it's such right. a interdisciplinary field that you can really go anywhere with it. Um, and right now we're trying to do it with periodontitis, for example, right? Because it, it's kind of like a non-healing wound of the mouth. Uh, you get the biofilm, as you know, you get a uh, uh, um, matrix metalloprotease response where, where tissue is being broken down. There's a necrotic tissue they have to debreed every so often. Mm -hmm. It's like exactly the same thing, but it's in the mouth, right? So sometimes the connections are not there, but we're trying to make those connections. We're doing, interesting, we're doing a similar study, but comparing a uh, chronic wound to chronic traumatic brain injury. And mm -hmm. because we're working on a drug and a lot of the studies that we do on CTBI and the mouse models are poorly understood. And mm -hmm. so we've got back to chronic wounds to better understand how this drug acts on chronic wounds to then relate it to traumatic brain injury. So it's, it's, um, it's the tale of two cities for us as well. Um, mm -hmm. trying to understand the mechanism in, in a wound, which is a little bit much better characterized than what happens after chronic TBI. So Exactly, pretty... yeah, yeah. We have this wonderful community of people who characterize the whole wound healing process. Um, we should be able to apply that to other diseases, I feel like. Mm -hmm. I, mean, together. I'm, I haven't read your paper, but uh, once I get off the off this uh, Teams meeting, I'll run and, run and grab it and, and read it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's fantastic. I mean, we all know that the, the everyone talks about the phases of healing and the continuous overlapping spectrum of, of events. And I mean, the paper just captures that really beautifully in, in real empirical data. So it's a great read. Thank you. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and Matt, I have a son who lives out in Chicago, so I'll let you know when I'm out there. We've also got a couple of clients out there, too. So I'm probably Absolutely. out there every month, but every every other month or so. Um, so maybe I could take you and your wife to, I don't know if you're married, but you and your family yeah. to dinner. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very nice offer. Now, I, I, I was so fortunate. I get to see Jordan's university. It's just amazing and, and go see Jordan at his place. And it was, it was a blast. You yeah, see not we... maybe as pretty, but... <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you need to thaw, you can come down to ASU for a little bit. Yeah, it's so. a very urban campus. We're like right in the middle of you know, downtown. So, <laughs> no, I know. I, I, um, that was one of the places I looked for a postdoc a hundred years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, and I was, it was, it was still doing a set of skeletal research back mm -hmm. then, and it was one of the one of the cool places I wanted to look at. Mm -hmm. Um. No, I, I love the city. It's 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 just a wonderful place. It's so good to be back, honestly. You know, I haven't lived in Europe for seven, eight years. Sure, it wasn't an experience and stuff, but I really miss Chicago and it's like cultural diversity and, you know, mm -hmm. every, you know, you have all kinds of cultures it's, represented. Food is incredible. It's, you know, it's not even The cool close. thing about Northern is you can go a block and feel like you're in a different country. Yeah. They exactly. go another block and you feel like you're in another country. It's very, very cool. And the yeah, and so right, you, food scene is outstanding. Yeah. yeah. So UIC is in the middle of Little Italy, like kind of like the historic Italian part of Chicago. So we get great restaurants, pasta, subway sandwiches, you know, the original subway sandwiches. But then you go like a couple blocks north and we have Ukrainian village, you know, you got very traditional oh, delis and Yep. it's it's really great. It's really great. So, I'm when it when you're going to be at SAWC this uh, spring. It's, it's yes, I will. Yep, it's in there. Miami, right? In May, no, it's right? Orlando, right? Orlando. I've, mm -hmm. I have so many meetings that are back to back that I'm just juggling. Am I in London? Am I in? You know, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, but, I'll be helping to chair a session on actually fibroblast heterogeneity. So that's cool. Great. <laughs> That's wonderful. And Jordan, what do, what, do you, what plans do you have for meetings coming up? I'll be at uh, WHS, of course, in Orlando. I think 
so I'm, I'm moderating a session with Louisa. Actually, we're moderating a wound inflammation session. So I'll get so, you. I'll get to meet you guys in person. That's great. Yeah, yeah it would be great. I'm. Um, I'm fortunately. I'm. I didn't. I don't have a lot of sessions that I'm running this year. So it's just. Um, just running the the wound shark innovation competition, and giving out money and sponsoring the social events. That's that's what I. That's what mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> Um, so anyway, Matt, it was a real pleasure meeting you. The work that you're doing is stellar. We look forward to following your career. And if we ever would like to collaborate with either of us, I think we're both interested in that as well. So uh, congratulations Absolutely. on your early uh, career award with uh, the Wound Healing Society. And please join a committee. We need smart people like you on committees. Uh, because I am I'm on the membership committee. I'm, yeah, <laughs> you, you just don't recognize him because yeah. he's usually clean shaven. Oh, I nice. guess in the winter he decided to. Oh, that's cool. Up. <laughs> no, no. It's, for for me, I've been I've been kind of winding down. I've already run my tour of almost every committee, and yeah. so now, like <laughs> I should probably kind of wean myself off for a little while and then come back after to kind of get fresh eyes and restart. Um, so I'm I'm just more the social sponsor of every wound care meeting around the world. That's pretty much. <laughs> that's an important job. That's incredibly important. Yeah. Anyway, great and we to all see appreciate you. it, Mitch. No, it's fun. <laughs> thank you guys and great to see you. And Jordan, I'll, I'll give you a call sometime. I want to talk about another project as well. Yeah, Take that care, sounds guys. great. Pleasure. Thank you so much for this.